Did you know Hollow Knight was being developed as a 3D game for consoles earlier this year, but was later scrapped? Me neither. That's because it wasn't. Liar! What you're looking at now is me and my team's best attempt at recreating Hollow Knight as a 3D game. Be sure to stick around to the end to watch the final playthrough. Oh, by the way, it would mean the world to me if you'd consider liking, subscribing for more game remakes, and even sharing this video on Facebook, Twitter, or Reddit if you find it interesting. All right, I'm gonna let Felipe do some talking. Felipe is my studio's lead 3D artist. Hey guys, thanks for having me here. So my first inclination about this project was going back to what Eric Gibson, Hollow Knight's co-director and main artist, had to say about his own creation. We started with the game jam. This one had a cool theme. The theme was beneath the surface. So I knew that obviously this needed to be our primary directive. Treat this exactly like a game jam with the exact theme but in 3D. Now to me this game seems like a great fit as a top-down 3D game. Not only because the gameplay of Hollow Knight reminds me a little bit of the 2D Zelda franchise, but mainly because I didn't want to code everything from scratch. Difficulty level to advanced. And Unity has a free project that's called Top Down Shooter with a ton of code already built in. It's gonna work great for this Hollow Knight remake. Guys, don't be afraid to use pre-made stuff for your indie games. Sure, you might feel proud creating everything from scratch, but you won't feel very proud when your game is still not finished after four years, like my game, Pinstripe. Use assets. So while I flip assets in this Unity project, Flippy is gonna start modeling the 3D assets. All right, so this is where the fun begins. First, I needed to make the environment modular, meaning it needed to be structured in a way that resembled Lego, so that I could just copy and paste, create variations, and quickly iterate. So I began with my usual starting point, which are the floors, making sure that they were perfectly square. We're not talking about this, but this. However, because Hollow Knight has themes of ruins, I wanted to give that organic feeling to it. So, I took a base mesh and sculpted each tile. Then, I added variations later. I also created some rock formations in a similar fashion. The second thing was, I used screenshots from the Forgotten Crossroads level, and I went straight to modeling some of its pillars, light poles, signs, the save bench, and other objects using a 2D reference for each of them in the background at all times to ensure that I was as close as possible to getting the right proportions for everything. I did the same thing for the slash effect and the butterflies. For the stylized grass, I took some screenshots into Photoshop and I traced over them using my trusty pen tool, added some outline and gradient by picking the colors directly from the game. Things like the cocoons and shells, as well as the spears, I felt that it would be better to actually have them modeled opposed to textures in a plane, like the grass, to offer some depth into this 3D environment. Because they have this hand-painted feel, I put together a base mesh and started working on them through sculpting some details to give that organic brush look. Making the characters for this project was certainly the most challenging aspect. As we know, they officially only exist inside a 2D realm. So while I was leaning on the original sketches, I needed to be a little creative and exert some liberties to ensure that they look right for a 3D model, but still emulating what you see in the game. So obviously, we needed the protagonist to look as close as possible to the original drawing. So I try not to play too hard on the scale of things using references at all times. And thankfully, there were plenty to go by. Enemies like the Crawlid, the Wandering Husk, especially one of the bosses, the False Knight, required a bit more thought and creative solutions, as we can't see the back of them, so they needed to have slightly different shapes to accommodate how they would be if they existed in a three-dimensional space. What the? For the Crawlid and Husk, I googled pictures of centipedes and ladybugs to help me understand their physiognomy. Another good example is the back of the False Knight, which in the game, it just looks like a sphere, but in 3D, it needs to look a little bit more like an actual spine if it wants to sustain the weight more accurately with the physics that we know. Oh, 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 oh. Ultimately, I felt that they worked out as best as possible with the time that we had. Once Felipe handed the models over to me, I waited five months before jumping into coding this thing. That's because I was busy on other things. Yeah, that's about it. But coding the game required three main tasks. The first was to capture the same great game feel of the sword slash in Hollow Knight. To achieve this, I simply added a quad perpendicular to the player, attached a simple graphic to it, and animated it. I also added a quick flash of light, particle emitter that emitted sparks, 
And then I also added an invisible box collider to the effect and wrote a script called Hurt Box. Now if this Hurt Box touches a damageable entity, that's another script used on grass, wheelbarrows, or even enemies, it's gonna tell the damageable entity to fire the Hurt function, which just has some effects and also knocks the health down by one. Now the second task was to create coin drops. Hollow Knight is one of the more encouraging indie games out there because developers like me who are terrible at coming up with unique game mechanics gravitate towards simple ones in Hollow Hollow Knight like coin drops. To do this, I simply created a box collider and a rigid body. I threw Felipe's Geo model in as a child, and then, this is important, added another large collider, a sphere collider, but I marked it as trigger. So if the player triggers the sphere, the collect function is called on the coin script. Otherwise, the box collider ensures the Geo bounces all over the place after being instantiated and doesn't fall through the floor. The final task was to create enemies. I thought this was going to be hard, but it wasn't. I simply added a nav mesh agent component, capsule collider, and stole a wandering enemy script from Google. Then I added the same exact component from the damageable entities like grass and wheelbarrows, and the enemies were done. Guys, enemies should all share the same core. That core sometimes isn't even called enemy. Sometimes it's even more fundamental. The more I grow as a game dev, the more generic my core scripts become. So right now, thanks to my buddy AJ who taught me this, it's called damageable entity. But in a decade, who knows, maybe the core class will be even simpler. Maybe it'll be called Proton or Atom, I don't know. Now, because I don't want to rip off Christopher Larkin's amazing soundtrack, I'm gonna look for some music that I can license as if I was actually releasing this as an indie game. The music should have a medieval fantasy vibe, but, but more importantly, it should mirror the narrative of Hollow Knight. According to Christopher Larkin, having a narrative has a bit of an impact into how I write the music. Specifically, I had to scour the internet for a licensable track similar to the track for the Forgotten Crossroads. Ultimately, I found two tracks. It was a tie between this one and this one. I ultimately landed on the track River's End by Hampus Nauselius. I'm sorry, I, I don't know how to say that. Regarding the game's sound effects, I realized this was going to take forever to create, so I suddenly changed my mind about ripping off Christopher Larkin. You said that you would destroy this and not join them. I was able to download a massive Dropbox folder of the sounds from the game thanks to Voidwalker778 on Reddit. Thank you, Voidwalker. Adding the sound to this project was ultimately what brought it fully to life. It's a lie. It's a lie. Art is insanely important, but sound is a close second, if not equally as important. In the end, bringing this game into a 3D world felt really natural. I wouldn't be surprised if Team Cherry is working on a 3D Hollow Knight sequel right now, or maybe after seeing this video. It just works. I told you he was on to us. Okay, let's play Hollow Knight in 3D. And just remember guys, there's just a couple days left to get our program 3D Art Pro for 40% off, plus my new 2D art program, totally free, but only for this sale event. Click below, there's just a handful of seats left. All right, so obviously we're gonna fall in from the sky, just like in the original game. I think if uh, the grass wasn't in the original game, I just don't think the game would be as fun. I love cutting the grass. So you can see when we hit this, a light appears. Sort of flashes, right? The reason we do that instead of making the whole thing white is because making the entire mesh flash white is a bit more of a coding challenge. I'll admit that I didn't really have time for that. Right, so if I get near this guy, you see he chases me, just like in the original. There we go. All right, let's see if we can jump over this. Geos. So you can see here just the very subtle details that Felipe threw into the game, like the animated GIF of the or the animated sprite of the uh, whoa, of the uh, whoa. <laughs> so, <laughs> apparently, there's a hole in there. Okay, uh, let's keep going. So sometimes, you know, there's there's bugs and glitches. In our, in our game full of bugs. 
But yeah, you can see here that Felipe's done an incredible job adding these very subtle details to this world. Including the, the flying bugs in here. Really beautiful work. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Please leave a like if you thought that we did a good job and subscribe to see more content like this. Oh, and by the way, follow Felipe below. Follow Felipe, he did a great job, didn't he? Let us know below of any other games you'd like to see recreated. And as always, feel free to join my free 3D program. It's called Easy 3D. It's for those of you who want to jump into 3D if you're not interested in joining my premium 3D course. This is a totally free course for you, so check that out below. I'll talk to you guys later. Cheers.